Today's ceremony in Memorial Park showcases the iconic Military Mountaineer statue, designed by Susan Grant Raymond and dedicated over 25 years ago on October 4, 1991. The idea for this monument was conceived by veterans of the World War II Division, almost as soon as the modern division was reactivated in 1985. Leading the charge were members of the National Association of the 10th Mountain Division, and in particular, Art Thompson, chairman of the Monument Committee. This statue has since become the enduring symbol of the 10th Mountain Division, second only to the division's unit patch. Originally set in the park on the corner of Mount Belvedere Boulevard and Memorial Drive South, now enduring Freedom Drive South, the statue was moved on March 30, 2007, as part of a larger planned memorial park established on these very grounds. The Military Mountaineer statue was joined later by two other Susan Raymond masterpieces. The Fallen Warrior and Hope for the Future Monuments were unveiled on October 29, 2013. The Fallen Warrior Monument depicts soldiers at a memorial service in front of a battlefield cross, and the Hope for the Future Monument has two soldiers on patrol, with one soldier's hand outstretched toward an Afghan child. Flanked on either side and to the rear of the Military Mountaineer statue are plaques inscribed with the names of 10th Mountain Division soldiers who made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation's freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Major General Walter E. Pyatt, Commanding General of the 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry in Fort Drum, and Command Sergeant Major Samuel J. Rourke, Command Sergeant Major of the 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry in Fort Drum, welcome to the 2018 Annual 10th Mountain Division Mountain Remembrance Ceremony. Today we recognize our brothers and sisters in arms who have given their lives in support of contingency operations around the world, and also honor the life of former 10th Mountain Division Commander, Major General Jeffrey L. Bannister. While these warriors are gone, we will ensure they are never forgotten. Officiating over today's ceremony is Brigadier General Patrick J. Donahoe, Deputy Commanding General of the 10th Mountain Division. Honored guests joining us for today's ceremony are the Honorable Jeanette Zando, Mayor Defreet, New York. Mrs. Walter E. Pyatt, spouse of the Commanding General, 10th Mountain Division, Light Infantry in Fort Drum. Command Sergeant Major Samuel J. Rourke, Command Sergeant Major, 10th Mountain Division, Light Infantry in Fort Drum, and Mrs. Rourke. Mr. Charles Donoghue, Chief of Police, Watertown, New York. Mr. Seth Bell. North Country Regional Representative for New York State Department of Labor. Mrs. Mary Jo Richards, Constituent Liaison for Representative Elise Stefanik. Brigadier General Patrick J. Donahoe, Deputy Commanding General, 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry in Fort Drum, and Mrs. Donahoe. Command Sergeant Major Jason O. Johnson, Command Sergeant Major Task Force Pando, Fort Drum, and Mrs. Johnson. Mrs. Brian S. Eifler, Spouse of the Deputy Commanding General for Operations, 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry in Fort Drum. Colonel Retired Michael Plummer, Man of the Mountain. Lieutenant Colonel Retired Gilbert Pearsall, Man of the Mountain. Command Sergeant Major Retired Joseph McLaughlin, Man of the Mountain. Mr. Charles Kingsley, Man of the Mountain. Miss Mary Corvo, Woman of the Mountain. The Honorable Barbara Weber, Woman of the Mountain. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation given by the Fort Drum Garrison Chaplain, Colonel Gary Fisher, and remain standing for the playing of the National Anthem. Let us pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, we assemble here to rededicate memorials that stand as a timeless reminder of selfless sacrifice and courage. We ask that your Holy Spirit comfort and strengthen us that we might have hope and trust in your goodness and mercy. We ask your special blessing and grace upon families who have lost so much. May their future be bright and marked by your abiding care. Provide your comfort to us. Help us to reach out to each other and help one another. We give all praise and glory for all that you do. We ask this in your precious name. Amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. In front of you today are the division colors of the 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry and Fort Drum. Colors that are cased indicate that the unit represented is deployed, conducting operations outside the United States. Represented from left to right are Headquarters and Headquarters Battalion 10th Mountain Division Gauntlet, 1st Brigade Combat Team Warriors, 2nd Brigade Combat Team Commandos, 3rd Brigade Combat Team Patriots, the 10th Mountain Division Color Guard, 10th Combat Aviation Brigade Falcons, 10th Sustainment Brigade Mule Skinners, Fort Drum Garrison, Fort Drum Medical Activity, Fort Drum Dental Activity, and 20th Air Support Operations Squadron Brutes. Also participating in today's ceremony is the 10th Mountain Division Band, under the direction of Chief Warrant Officer 2 Daniel R. Parker. The bugler for today's ceremony is Specialist Benjamin Dawkins. Today's salute battery is Bravo Battery from 3rd Battalion, 6th Field Artillery Regiment, commanded by Captain Noah Snyder. At this time, Command Sergeant Major Christopher K. Greco, U.S. Army retired, who served as Command Senior Listed Leader for U.S. Central Command and also as Command Sergeant Major of the 10th Mountain Division, and Colonel Michael T. Plummer, U.S. Army retired, who served as 10th Mountain Division Chief of Staff, will join Brigadier General Patrick J. Donahoe and Command Sergeant Major Jason O. Johnson and unveiling the plaque honoring 10th Mountain Division's losses over the past 12 months of combat operations. This plaque honors the following 10th Mountain Division fallen warrior. Died of injuries sustained in combat Iraq. Specialist Alexander W. Misseldon, 710 Brigade Support Battalion, October 2017. Specialist Misseldine, age 20, was killed Sunday, October 1, 2017, in Saladin Province, Iraq, when an improvised explosive device detonated near his convoy. He fought hard to be among those chosen to deploy with the Patriot Brigade and was known in his unit for his work ethic and reliability. His sacrifice, like his name on this plaque, are now forever a part of the storied legacy of the mighty 10th Mountain Division. On this occasion, we also take the opportunity to remember Major General Jeffrey L. Bannister, who died suddenly on May 27, 2018. Major General Bannister commanded the 10th Mountain Division for 26 months from 2015 to 2017. His 37 years of dedicated service to the United States Army are remembered as part of the history of the 10th Mountain Division and have been memorialized in bricks leading to the memorial statue. Ladies and gentlemen, Brigadier General Patrick J. Donahoe, Deputy Commanding General of the 10th Mountain Division. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for attending today. Distinguished guests, truly honor our fallen and their families by your presence. So on behalf of Major General Pyatt, who's deployed forward today in Baghdad, welcome to this year's Mountain Remembrance Ceremony. Today, we pay tribute to all of our nation's war dead with special emphasis on our 10th Mountain heroes. This year, we specifically remember and dedicate a plaque for Specialist Misseldine, who gave, in the immortal words of President Abraham Lincoln, the last full measure of devotion to our nation this past year in faraway Iraq. We also remember another great warrior and our former division commander, Major General Jeff Bannister, it is right and it's fitting that we remember these two American soldiers and pay tribute to their lives and to their sacrifice. So I have the distinct honor today to introduce our first guest speaker, 
and no stranger to the 10th Mountain Division and no stranger to the North Country, Command Sergeant Major retired Chris Greca. Chris served with the 4th Brigade Combat Team, the Patriots, down at Fort Polk. He also was our Command Sergeant Major Mountain 7 here at Fort Drum. Before moving on and eventually retiring as the senior enlisted leader of the United States Central Command in combat operations across the Middle East. And so it's truly our honor today, so please join me in welcoming back to the 10th Mountain and to Fort Drum, Command Sergeant Major Chris Greca. Ladies and gentlemen, th this could have been dangerous because you see in my hand I've got an iPad. And although I didn't write a speech, this thing holds a lot of information. So I could ramble for a little while, but uh, hey, I'm not even going to open this thing. Hey, good morning to our distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen, uh, General Donahue, to the leadership of 10th Mountain Division, uh, General Pyatt. Uh, I want to thank him long distance for this invitation. Uh, to come down here and speak. I am absolutely honored uh, and humbled to be in the presence of 39 families, Gold Star families, uh, with 66 individuals out here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've talked to a lot of crowds before, which includes Gold Star mothers and fathers, and I've never had a crowd this large. But it speaks to the hospitality of not only this great division, uh, but certainly Watertown and the surrounding communities as well. Uh, there is one person I need to recognize as a distinguished uh, guest here, and that's Miss Annette Weber. And the reason why I'm doing this is my wife last night threatened me with physical violence if I did not recognize her publicly out here this morning. So Miss Weber, just know that Miss Darina, my wife, uh, sends her love from from Fortson, Georgia. Um, ladies and gentlemen, about 17 years ago, 18 years ago, I was riding on the back of a C-130. I was going from uh, England to Hungary as part of a special operations task force. And I'll never forget when the pilot or the co-pilot came back and he said, listen, the World Trade Centers have been hit, uh, the Pentagon's been hit, and there's 17 hijacked aircraft in and around US airspace. Now, certainly the latter turned out to be the fog of war, uh, but the events actually happened, as obviously everybody here remembers. Those four aircraft, two into the World Trade Centers, one into the Pentagon, and one into a field in Shanksville, uh, Pennsylvania. And ladies and gentlemen, that became a game changer. It changed the lives of mostly everybody sitting out here today. We had a choice at that time, ladies and gentlemen, to be proactive or reactive. We could sit back on our heels and wait for the next attack to happen, or we could be proactive and send US forces, soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines into that region uh, to get after violent extremist organizations. If you would have asked me on 9-12, the day after 9-11, when is the next terrorist attack going to happen? If you would have said within the month, I probably would have bet a little bit of money. If you said the next attack will happen within the next calendar year, I might have bet a paycheck. If you'd have said the next 10 years, will there be a violent extremist, a major attack on US soil within the next 10 years? Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't think we could stop it. I probably would have bet an annual paycheck. And if you said 18 years later, 17 plus years later, there will not be a violent attack or a violent extremist organization conducting a major attack on US soil, ladies and gentlemen, I thought it was impossible. But it wasn't impossible. And it wasn't impossible because the 1% of the US population that will raise their hand in an all volunteer force and say, send me. And ladies and gentlemen, that's your sons. That's your loved ones that the 39 families represent here today. And roughly, when I was in US Central Command, the 6,800 between Operation 
Iraqi freedom, enduring freedom, the Freedom Sentinel, inherent resolve, our operations in the CENTCOM AOR, roughly 6,800. But ladies and gentlemen, that 1%, your sons, your husbands, your grandchildren, your fathers, that 1% are heroes, the true heroes of the American people and of this country are your sons. They rose their hands during a time of war and they said, send me. Ladies and gentlemen, as I used to circulate around the CENTCOM AOR as the CENTCOM Command Senior Enlisted Leader, I would run into young men and women, about 20. Just like Alex Misseldine, the soldier that we unveiled his plaque today. Much like him, because I've seen thousands of service members like him, Alex was 20 years old, from Tyler, Texas. Raised his right hand, won the lottery, and got assigned to good old Fort Polk, Louisiana. Home of the Huddle House, where you can get two cheeseburgers, fries, and a large Coke for $5.99. Boy, he won the lottery. Assigned to 710th uh, BSB as a Ford support company and golf company, Alex raised his right hand. Why? Because his parents clearly raised him the right way, and he wanted to serve, serve his country, do what 99% of the American population will not do, and that's serve. That's what your loved ones have done. And Alex raised his right hand. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this statue behind me has meant many things, and when I was a assigned to this division, I was involved in an SVBIED attack in downtown Kabul on 18 May 2010 as the division sergeant major. During that attack, we lost Colonel Belkifer and Colonel Bartz, our G1 and G8. We lost Major Jeff Parker, the aide to General Corbold, Andre Corbold, one of our Canadian partners, uh, Major McHugh and two other drivers. And I looked at that statue differently on that day. To me, ladies and gentlemen, that statue represents us. And those of us that are still alive and still walking are continuing our climb, our climb to glory. But because of people like Alex, and because of the 39 families out here, the 312 that have been lost since 9-11, and the 6,800 or 7,000 servicemen or women, they're st standing on top of that statue. And ladies and gentlemen, that's Major General Jeff Bannister. And that's Alex and his teammates, his brothers and sisters, your sons and daughters sitting up there. And every day they're pulling us higher. We don't have a choice but to win this fight. We don't. It can be a home game or it can be a away game. And I don't care what anybody says, we all live in freedom today because of your sons and daughters, because of these men in uniform, because of those standing behind me today. We can do things in freedom because 99% of the population takes what we do for granted, takes what your sons and daughters have done for granted. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll never forget you. My families will never forget you. Your teammates will never forget you. This division, our army, and you know what? Hopefully our nation. But keep in the back of your head, you always have a place to call home in this division. I'm proud to have been the division sergeant major of this division. I'm proud to have been a teammate of this mighty division and army. And I thank you, you're blessed, you will stay in my thoughts and prayers each and every day, you and your family. God bless you, God bless this division, our army, and God bless the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna introduce an old friend and uh, Colonel Retired uh, Plumber. He, you know, he's one of the individuals that's been a staple of this division uh, since I was here and long before I was here. Matter of fact, he came up here when this division uh, was established 
85, 86 time frame, the modern day. So Colonel Plummer, uh, I welcome you and thank you. Welcome all, and thank you, Sergeant Major, for your inspirational words. A few of the duties of being the president of the Fort Drum chapter of the National Association of the 10th Mountain Division are as important to me as having the honor of providing remarks at memorial services for our fallen warriors. On Memorial Day, we honored all those who made the ultimate sacrifice in the service of their nation. Today, we honor all those who wore the red, white, and blue patch of the 10th Mountain Division and their Gold Star family members. Additionally, we have with us in attendance several other Gold Star families from the Fort Drum, New York regional area. Give them a hand. You've heard me say it many times before, freedom isn't free. On the plaques in front of you are the names of over 300 mountain soldiers who paid the price in blood for the gift of freedom. I believe, as do most warriors, that they are seated around the great campfire in the sky at the final bivouac, watching what we're doing with the gift they have given us. A seat beside them is the ultimate wish of every warrior, but it must be earned. And the fallen are the lane graders who decide who gets to join them. Many don't, because it's not about rank, it's not about who you know, it's about deeds. When the master mountaineer in the sky calls your name, there are no alibis. You're gonna be graded by what you've done for soldiers and their families, what you've done for our army, what you've done for our nation. On the 27th of May, a warrior friend of mine, and of many here, was called. Major General Jeffrey L. Bannister died of natural causes while on transition leave. I first met Jeff Bannister in 1980, when I was Chief of Staff of the 82nd Airborne Division. I selected him to be my driver because he was clearly the best of the best that the division had sent for selection. When, when the Brigadier General Bill Klein came in as the new Assistant Division Commander for Operations, I recommended that he take Jeff because I found out by that time, chief of staffs don't go anywhere. They're chained to the desk. You really didn't, didn't need a driver. General Klein took him and within a very short time realized his potential and told me to begin the journey from green to gold, moving from enlisted to commissioned. Jeff was commissioned through the Reserve Officer Training Corps as an infantry officer in 1984. He began a 34 year commissioned career as a rifle battalion in the first of the 504 Parachute Infantry Regiment, 82nd Airborne Division. Since that time, he commanded at every level from platoon to division. He served in the Airborne, mechanized, armor, ranger, special ops, and in the light as the Deputy Commanding General for Operations 2009 to 2011 and the Commanding General 2015 to 2017. He had all the tough command and staff jobs and did them superbly. Major General Pyatt called him a blue collar general, someone who could be relied upon to accomplish the mission regardless of the difficulties or circumstances. Accomplished them in peace and in war. He was comfortable in the mud or in the fight or in the tough decision meetings 
where there really were no good options. I was there in 2009 when the one-time general's driver was promoted to brigadier general. General Klein attended and pinned the star on his right shoulder. And then Jeff's driver, a spec four, pinned the star on his left. General Klein had secured for him an appointment to the military academy. Only in America, and only a soldier who understood and loved soldiers could think to have that kind of a ceremony. Another privilege I have as the chapter president is the opportunity to brief new members of the command group as they arrive. I bring them up to date on what the chapter is doing and what's going on in the community. When I briefed General Bannister, I told him very frankly that the great community support that we had enjoyed for many years was beginning to wane, primarily because of all the deployments of the division. Major Bannister understood. He understood the problem and the need. So he set in motion processes and procedures to fix the problem. At the end of his command tour, he wrote a letter to the people of the North Country. We published it in the Watertown Daily Times. It included the following statement. It's a surprise statement. Oh, there it is. Tracy and I want you to know how much we appreciate all you have done over the years, especially during the last two when a large portion of the division was deployed. Soldiers always perform better when they know they are appreciated and their loved ones are cared for. Your 10th Mountain Division remains one of the most deployed divisions in the United States Army. By design and by hard-won reputation, it will continue to be the division of choice in the years ahead, serving our nation where the need is the greatest. It will never fail in any assigned mission. Thank you all for the part you and the community play in helping make that happen. Major General Bannister understood the role of the community in maintaining peak readiness in garrison and sustaining it while deployed. And he did something about it. A soldier, statesman, leader, and family man, I believe Major General Jeff Bannister has earned a seat at the great campfire in the sky. And while I have a few more mountains to climb myself before I sleep, I aspire to someday sit beside him. On this special day, and on every day, please take a moment to remember and honor our divisions and America's fallen and their gold star family members. Every time you hug someone you love, feel the sunshine on your face, or see that beautiful American flag waving in the breeze, remember that you are free to enjoy those moments because of the sacrifice of others. May God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you for being here today. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the 21-gun salute, playing of taps and amazing grace. Then a moment of silence to reflect upon the courage and honor and sacrifice made by our lost soldiers, followed by the benediction.
Let us pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, you are a refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. You have searched us and redeemed us. You nourish us and sustain us. You know us better than we know ourselves. You alone know and share all our hurts and our deep sorrows. Help us to accept what we cannot understand and enable us to remain faithful even in the midst of suffering. Give us faith and courage that we may meet the days to come with patience, hope, and strength. It is in your precious name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. We invite friends and family members of our fallen to be among the first in viewing the plaque. Additionally, please join us for a reception under the tent situated behind you. And we welcome you to visit the Hall of Heroes interactive display within Hayes Hall, where more information on the soldiers remembered throughout the Memorial Garden can be found. Thank you for attending today's annual Mountain Remembrance Ceremony.